It has been my true joy to be with you, uh, to walk beside you, to walk every step of the way with you. Difficult, I know, I know, and there are days, particularly nights, when you feel overwhelmed, you feel like you're not getting anywhere. But I can truly tell you that this group, who calls himself Chambre, is truly amazing. What you have gone through, the challenges, the, the speed at which you are going through everything is very, very impressive. I joke about going to the Ascended Masters Club and telling my stories of my people, of Chambre. And it's very true. It is very, very true. A few months ago I said that we're going to take a look in February 2016. We're going to take a look to see where we are. Have enough Chambre realized enough of their enlightenment for all of us to go forth. Otherwise, it's a waste of your time and mine. But so far, I feel that we're on a very, very, very good path together. Difficult, challenging. As I said so many times, enlightenment is brutal to the human, not to the soul, not to the I am, not to the truth. But it is absolutely brutal to this aspect called the human. Whether we are here in the Shouds or whether we are in Kihak going forward, we're going to go far beyond just this human focus, into the and, into the many. There is not going to be any going into the one at all. So if that's your expectation, you're going to be greatly disappointed. We're not bringing everything back into a one. That plane sucks. <laughs> Those are technical, spiritual terms. Yes, they're in the Kabbalah, if you read closely enough. We're going to be going into the many, and that's where it gets fun, and that's what I'm particularly excited about. As we do this, I, I want you to understand where you've come from and, and where you are now. So much of this energy of Shambra goes back to the time of Yeshua. And I know many of you feel a, a closeness and affinity, a, a deep love for Yeshua, for Mary, Mary Magdalene, for all of those who were there at the time. You relate to it in in a beautiful but sometimes angry way. I'll explain that in a moment. But that's where you started coming together. That's where the essence of Chambre, of course, uh, Atlantis, but that was a long, 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 long time ago. So much of it came together in the time of Yeshua, where you made a commitment to bring in the divine seed, the Christ consciousness, Christos consciousness. Many, many, many lifetimes ago, all of you were part of that. Even you, dear Linda Visa, you weren't in a physical body, but you were here. You came as close as you could from the other realms to be here, to accompany those who were coming to Earth. You could say you were in your angelic form, most of you in your human form. Whether you personally knew Yeshua or any of the other cast of characters, doesn't make a difference. You were somewhere here on the planet at the time. You had made a commitment that you were going to bring in the divine seed, the Christ consciousness, the pure consciousness. And then you'd come back, and at some point you would reap what you had sowed. You would take, you would harvest what you had planted for yourself and perhaps for others. So that time has such a meaning to you, has such a depth for all of you. A couple thousand years ago, coming here in human form, some of you in angelic form, and saying, now, now. A lot of you met each other back then. You meet each other again at our gatherings or in your internet space. And there's that sudden remembrance, that sudden recollection. You met uh, the likes of Tobias, who was 
such an influence on you also in angelic form at that time of Yeshua. But that's when you could say so much of this really started taking hold. Then most of you went through an interesting, a long, interesting period of lifetimes in the churches, in the religions, in the spiritual movement. Some of you went to the convents. Some of you went to the monastery. Some of you off to different parts of the world, into the temples. And there you studied, you prayed, you meditated, you focused. A lot of discipline. In a way, it was good for you. You learned how to focus on something, how to discipline yourself, your human self. But sometimes uh, was very, very undisciplined, very scattered in many ways. You learned to bring back parts of yourself that had gotten very, very lost. You needed to do it in these quiet type of convents or monasteries or temples. You did, for, did that for many, many lifetimes. And there's a certain beauty about that when you remember those times. So quiet, so simple, so dull. <laughs> In a way, very dull. In a way, very, very good for you at that time. It was a time of taking a, an inner journey within yourself. But it was surrounded by a lot of discipline, a lot of routine, a lot of regimen, a lot of group think. There wasn't a lot of room for individual thinking, a lot of group thinking. And at a certain point, you left disillusioned. Maybe it was. 300 years ago, 500 years ago, doesn't matter, but disillusioned by uh, the fact that the real mysteries and the real secrets remained mysteries and secrets. No matter how hard you looked, who you went to for talk or for counsel, nobody really knew the answer. The real mystery was that thing that surrounded the mysteries. Nobody knew. You knew there were answers. You knew that your spiritual path, your place as a divine cedar, was real. When you saw others who simply memorized the books and the lines and the rules and went no further, no deeper within themselves, so disillusioned, you left or you were kicked out. That was a very, very difficult period for you. Maybe some of you three, four lifetimes ago, maybe even just one or two. Very difficult time because it was like leaving everything that had been important, leaving the very path that you had helped to create in the first place, leaving the security of these groups and organizations, leaving friends, leaving those who you considered to be your teachers. So you left, walked alone for a number of lifetimes, kind of wandering out in the desert in a manner of speaking, but all by yourself. At times, at, in these lifetimes and even this lifetime, at times trying to get back into spiritual, into the mystical, and at other times trying to run from it, at times trying to find a group that you could relate to once again, feeling that deep need for that friendship, that human association, at other times not wanting anything to do with groups, feeling lost, feeling abandoned, then hearing from the likes of Tobias that even your spirit guides were gone. Now you are really alone. You found this closeness with this group, but a group without rules, a group that has no practices that you have to maintain, a group that has no requirements. Because if this group did, if this organization called the Crimson Circle had anything that you were required to do, you'd run. You'd walk away. It's a natural attraction of like-minded. 
kindred spirit that brings you here, but that doesn't hold you here, that doesn't tie you here. Some of you have left for a while, gone other places, but realize that this is a home. This is a safe space that you can come to and go from any time you choose. It's always here for you. And when I say that I'm going to be with you every step of the way, you've come to realize I am. I'm not going to do it for you. I'm not going to fix the problems in your life because I don't see problems in your life other than you. <laughs> and we're working on that. I really don't see problems in your life as you do. I see situations that are uncomfortable for the human persona, but that's the very thing you're trying to expand beyond. Not get rid of. Not go from being human to just divine. Not going into a oneness, but going from just a human focus, human consciousness, into many, many, many of thyself. Without a singular core, without one of those parts of self having to manage any of the other parts of self. It's difficult for the human mind to even comprehend that. But as you go beyond singularity into the many of the self, you realize that there's not even the soul that's trying to keep everything together. There's no need to. That, my friends, is freedom, and that's where you're going. These last few lifetimes wandering off by yourself, difficult indeed. There's been times that part of you feels, ah, just to be in a group again, a temple, a monastery, something like that, but you can't go back. No. First of all, you wouldn't last very long there. They would ask you to leave for a variety of reasons. <laughs> Secondly, you'd find you'd remember how really dull and boring it is, almost a denial of your humanness. It's not about denying it. It's about enjoying it and embracing it and also going beyond it. So what a pleasure it's been for me. I had my, you could say, reservations about the time Tobias was leaving. But I want to work with a group, not just a group, but a global group that didn't seem to have any real connection not just any group, but a group of <sighs> – yeah, you know. Uh, you had a reputation in the other realms, truly. You had a reputation in the Ascended Masters Club, even though by back then there wasn't a name deeply associated with you. It was like, oh yeah, them, <laughs> the Invisibles. Uh, you had a, a reputation for pushing the, the, the envelope, for being pestilent, for being what you call yourself pioneers. You, you had a group for being one of the most difficult to teach of any. Mm. So when I came here, I said, I have nothing to teach you. Nothing. I'll stand here. I'll be with you step by step. I'll try to assure you, try to show you that you are worthy of being loved, but I have nothing to teach you. Distract you, yes. Love you, yes, but teach. You're already doing that for yourself. You don't need another teacher. <laughs>